Good morning, girls and guys. Hi, hello, my name is CJ, and I am back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at and hopefully learn a lesson or two from. Um, so, yeah, I do paintings, digital paintings mostly, and I record them. Why not? <laughs> and I post them on here in my YouTube just for me to talk about the process and whatnot. A lot of the process are the same. So if you've watched one of my videos, it's pretty much the same throughout. The only cool thing about some of my videos is that you might learn a thing or two um, specifically because of the way the illustration was done. Um, there might be something unique in a particular illustration that um might necessitate like a different step than i normally do so yeah it's always interesting to learn a thing or two from and that's always the case with any narrated art time lapse really you know some of them are like the same but some of them are like very enlightening uh bob ross comes to mind uh some of his videos are pretty much the same all the way throughout but every now and then there would be a video that would make me pause and think and i would be like wow Thanks, Bob Ross. I learned a thing or two. So this is what I do. This is my jam. This is what my aim is. So yeah. But for today, we are watching a particular illustration that got its start from the Daily Spit Paint group. Uh, it's a group that I'm part of in Facebook. The group posts four prompts, uh, four art prompts every day. You get to pick one to do an artwork out of. Their one big rule though is that you only have 30 minutes to do a painting. <laughs> so this particular image that we are watching right now, this is my speed paint entry. Um, and I'm going to just quickly talk about this because this is going to end in a minute or two. So basically what I did was I did a quick sketch. I did a quick coloring where I just pick a few colors, kind of spread them around the canvas. And then I combine my line sketch and my colors into one layer. I smudge them all. Um, and then, oh, right now I'm actually doing some extra edits. I'm doing some colors to, uh, I using the brush um, set to color mode to color up some of the background. And yeah, now I'm just straight up detailing, so. I know I did a color dodge at one point. I don't know if that's already been passed in this video um, where I basically darkened some parts of, or I darkened the whole image and then went back with color dodge just to kind of brighten things up. But it looks like I'm still in the detailing process. I might have already done it or I might do it later. I'm not sure. But right now in the detailing process, I'm kind of just um, making some marks just to kind of indicate what things are. Um, clearly I did a bunch of marks in the back, so it makes it look like there's a bunch of, uh, objects that's being sold in this particular shop. And then now I'm going to concentrate on the girl. Um, basically I'm just going to detail her out. Well, actually I'm working on her, on the background behind her first, just to kind of sharpen things up a little bit. And then now I'm going to go back in and detail her. Uh, going to start first with the hair, which is what I'm doing. And then, of course, I'm kind of marking things out uh, on her face just to kind of indicate where things are. So you can see that I marked out her cheeks and marked out her nose. And then now I'm working on her clothes. And then, yeah, I'm just going to keep working until I detail her out and she's done. Uh, and then eventually what I'm going to end up doing is that since I love this 30 minute speed paint so much, I'm going to develop it some more in a 30 or in a three hour speed paint, which is what I'll do eventually. Okay, so I added some more color dodge. There it is. That's what I was talking about where I darkened the whole thing and then came back with some color dodge just to kind of lighten some parts out. And then that's it. That's the speed paint. Yep. Looks really cool. And then I'm going to develop this some more uh, farther on. But before I start talking about my uh, three hour speed paint, which is this right now, this is the beginning of the three hour speed paint. Um, 
let me talk real quick about the prompts because I didn't talk about the prompts. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, this started out as a prompt from the Daily Spit Paint group. Um, this particular illustration is unique because typically when I do my Daily Spit Paint, I only pick, I only ever really pick one prompt for the most part. For this particular illustration, I decided to combine two. Uh, one of the prompts was Apothecary Shop. And then the other one is green haired girl. And I decided why not put the green haired girl in an apothecary shop. So that's what the whole idea behind this illustration is. A very, very simple interpretation of the prompts. Um, I typically just do simple interpretations. Really my main focus is more composition and whatnot. Um, there are times where my interpretation gets really, really cool. Um, those are rare and few between. So those are always interesting to look at when, when I do a daily spit paint with a very interesting and unique interpretation of it. Um, so that's always just cool. But this one is just pretty much straightforward. It's a shop and it's a green haired girl. <laughs> Nothing fancy about it. What I do love about this illustration though is just the composition of it. I really think that my stylistic choice of having predominantly reds and browns all over the background and then having that green just specifically on the girl which is you know obviously the main focus that creates a really nice contrast so right off the bat it's a very attractive um Another contrast that I really like that I did on this particular illustration is that um, how the overall mood and atmosphere of the image is kind of dark and then you just have this shaft of light shining on the green haired girl. So maybe it's coming from a window um, or whatnot. Either way, it kind of gives this whole very moody atmospheric look into the image um and yeah it just lends a very nice um composition credence to the composition which i really really love so yeah <laughs> this is the reason why i created a lesson out of this particular illustration because it was just really really cool I want to make note of what's showing in the video right now. In the video right now, I'm doing a quick sketch of the girl on a separate layer. Sometimes I do this. Uh, actually, I do this a lot. If the image gets really confusing for me and all those color information is just kind of making it really tricky for me to see where things are, what I typically do is I turn off my base paint. Um, layer i turn everything off really and then i will just do a quick line sketch of whatever it is that i needed more definition out of in this case um i really needed to focus on a girl and to have a good nice sketch of her uh, especially since she is the focus of the illustration obviously i need to do, uh, give her more love than the background itself even though the background <laughs> takes up a huge amount of space in the overall illustration. In the overall illustration. But yeah, uh, obviously, she's still the focus of the illustration. So I do need to pay attention to her. So, But now that she's done, I'm going to just slowly zoom her back down to roughly about the same size as the original girl. And then, of course, I just kind of line her up correctly with everything else um but yeah so yeah i wanted to make note of that but now that i'm done talking about the composition and what i like best about the composition i'll talk real quick about uh what has transpired before i drew the girls so what i did was i took the image of the image i got from the 30 minute speed paint and right off the bat, I just use it as my template um, for my three hour illustration to develop it farther. Typically when I do my speed paints, I do a totally completely different composition more than half the time, 80% of the time actually. You know, 
with my speed paints i would just throw something in there you know just to see if something would stick and if i really like what i got from there then what i would do is try to develop it in a different composition of some sort typically that's what i do um my favorite thing to do is you know i take 30 minutes speed paint use it as an inspiration for a 3d image so i, I would fire up blender I would compose something in Blender in less than an hour, and that's really my main thing, it's just speed, essentially. Simply because I don't want to get bogged down by details, since I know a lot of details I can fake anyways in, in drawing. But I would fire up Blender, uh, and I would compose something in Blender for an hour, and then as soon as that composition is done, then I would typically bring it back to Krita and draw a quick sketch over it and then do my painting. In this particular instance, um, the original 30 minutes speed paint had such a good composition to begin with that I didn't even really need or I didn't feel the need to fire up Blender to help me with perspective issues and whatnot. I basically just took the original image and did vanishing points based off that image you can see parts of my vanishing points my va my perspective lines uh the orange and the cyan you could kind of like see them over you could see it overlaid into my image and so um yeah i basically just took that original image and just kind of just based things off that image so it was really cool because it saved me an hour of doing work from blender so i just pretty much just straight up painted on top of that original one and just basically developed it yeah so so i took it i took that original illustration did some vanishing points and then now i'm doing the sketch which is what you're seeing me do and then um after this i would I typically color, recolor again, um, just to add some more variation to the colors. Uh, this time though, I used the original painting as a heavy background. Um, so what I did was I used it as a background and then lightly colored in some other areas, some more. Um, and then of course I merged them all into one layer, smudge everything so that I could get my base paint. Uh, which is basically what I detail on so yeah so you'll see me just finish up the sketch do my quick coloring thing and then merge everything and then as soon as I merge everything I'll start smudging and then yeah I'll do my details which I'll talk about once that process begins <music>
so at this point I have finished mudging um, everything I've done so far and I've finally gotten my base paint uh, which I'm slowly working on uh, as soon as I get my base paint um, basically the base paint is pretty much the whole image already except it's a little fuzzy because as much things around and the reason why I do this is just so that I could get um, some nice blending and some nice color variations that I basically rework on um, and paint on top of uh, when once I start doing my detailing process which is pretty much what I'm doing right now basically it's a three-step process and that's me just delineating my edges making my edges sharper just so that the shapes read clear um, everything is fuzzy so obviously I need to make things a little sharper and then I also accentuate the shadows if the shadows need a little bit of darkening and then I add highlights um, and I just rinse repeat the process uh, this three-step process all through parts of the image so I always start out in the background uh, and then I work my way into the foreground or the slash the focus character in this case you can see me slowly work on the background and in the shelves in the back um, you can see that when I zoom out everything is pretty much readable for the most part it's clear where the shelves are where all the items are it just needs a little bit of definition and basically that's just kind of what I just work on um, so yeah I just flow at this point and this is pretty much the part that I love the most because it's all just flow at this point you know where everything is just kind of automatic and I don't really have to think much um, so long as I set all my values right and all my color compositions and my perspective so long as all of those is set by the time that I get my base paint then once I start my detailing process it just becomes very meditative practically uh, it's really just just really nice <laughs> I love it basically it's my piece of the time of the day you know where I just feel peace, my peace of the time of the day, my time, the time of my day where I feel at peace, because, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, I just slowly build the details, basically. Um, I added some more white in the windows because I realized that that was a little too dark, so I brightened it up a bit. Um, I corrected this shelf right, right now, the one I'm working on, um, I corrected the perspective on it because the perspective on it was off before and uh, this was in the initial sketch stage um, which I forgot to mention but yeah I corrected it just because it, it was really wonky looking um, and then I'm working this shelf really was problematic for me when I created this because I really love Baroque slash Rococo furniture um, all those garnish uh like the ones i'm working on all those flourishes those are so interesting to look at but yet very very complicated to paint and draw especially in a speed paint such as this you know so me having to speed paint this it's pretty difficult <laughs> so but um that's the beauty of a speed paint is because the beauty of the speed paint is really you just need to give an impression of the thing um you don't really have to necessarily fully detail it and so that's just what i did i kind of added some highlights on that flourishes i mean if you look at it it doesn't look like anything but from afar or it, when you take the whole image composition in whole then it kind of just looks like what it's supposed to be right um and really that's the really cool thing about painting is that half the time you don't even really have to fully detail whatever object it is that you're painting in the background you kind of just have to give an indication that what that object is basically so and this is one of the cool things that i learned from speed painting and from practicing speed painting is practicing this skill because I get very OCD sometimes where I just want everything perfect and I try to like render everything but it actually works against my favor this was how this was me when I first started painting I try to over render everything and then I realize it actually looks ugly if everything's over rendered so I really have to watch out 
um, how much I render because sometimes I render too much so um, speed painting helped me dial down this behavior and realize you know just focus on some of the more important things highlights shadows uh, that kind of stuff uh, yeah Marco Bucci really mentioned that um, value is so much uh, Oh, I changed the title. I didn't re realize I changed the title. And then eventually I brought it back to just the same title. That's very funny. But Marco Bucci mentioned that value is so much more important than color, which is true to a certain degree. But I realized that if you take that <laughs> lesson to heart, you might end up like me where I didn't care about color for the longest time until people started complaining about my colors. Because, yeah. But now I pay attention to my colors because they are important. So, yeah. But Marco Bucci is right that value is king and really when I do my detailing process that's what I really pay attention to the the shadows and the highlights because they make they make everything basically so but yeah just watch me render in detail some more and I'll just come back at the end of the video to wrap this video up nicely. <laughs> So this illustration is almost done. Uh, I am close to finishing it. Uh, I'm zooming out just to check the look of it from afar. And from afar, it looks really, really cool. So uh, the background's done. I do realize, or I do notice some imperfections now, <laughs> now that I'm taking a look at this video, but I'm just not going to go over that just because those imperfections are minute. If you can't tell what's wrong in the image, then yeah, I succeeded. <laughs> so, but there are some errors in there and that's just me being a perfectionist. So, and now I'm just working on the girl. 
which is the centerpiece of the illustration. And obviously, just like I mentioned, if you do everything right uh, with the initial phases of the illustration, detailing can go by so fast, so quick. Um, and you can see that even though the girl is the main focus of the painting, I spent only two minutes of this 30 minute video uh, working on her, which really the two minutes will translate to more like 10, 15 minutes of actual work, um, obviously, because this is speeded up. So yeah, that's how long I spent on her. It's just about 10, 15 minutes. Everything else was set uh, correctly. So I just needed to just define my edges some more and just add some highlights and some shadows. And so, yeah, I wish you could see me work on her arms right now. I'm adding some highlights and just defining it some more. But yeah, I absolutely love this illustration. I love the chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro feel of it. I can never pronounce that word right. Um, hats off to you if you can, because <laughs> I never could pronounce that word. But chiaroscuro is uh, an art term where it, there's a heavy contrast between light and dark. And in this case, this particular illustration has a, a heavy contrast between light and dark. Uh, you can see that only small portions of the illustration are well lit, everything else is in um, darkness, so yeah. But yep, looking good, looking really, really nice. I'm really happy with this illustration. It is one of my favorites uh, still to this day, even a year later, it's still one of my favorites. So and that's it. That's the end of the illustration. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from uh, like and subscribe. I will catch you guys in the next video. Good night.